let me show you some tips and tricks that we can perform on Realme GT7 T. So we're going to start with the home screen. And over here, what you can do is, as you can see, we can apply different effects for transitioning and between pages. If you want to set it up, you can press and hold your finger on an empty space in the home screen and then you should be able to find transitions over here. We have a couple of different options to choose from, so you can pick your favorite one and then press apply at the bottom of the screen and then down over here in the top right corner. So as you can see, we can have a cool effect when switching between pages. Of course, in order to add a widget to the home screen, all you have to do is once again press and hold your finger on an empty space and then at the bottom you should be able to find widgets and that's fine of course. However, there are some widgets that are not available in this section, but they are over here by pressing this plus button in the top right corner. For example, over here we have this, this to-do list, we have some highlights, uh, we have the recorder over here. So we can add it to the um, to the home screen. We also have step tracker as well. So here we have our own step tracker. So you can find additional options um, to the to the home screen, additional widgets that are uh, usually not available by going to widgets. What is quite interesting is that we can change the name of an app if we have it in the home screen. So for example, over here in the home screen, let's say I have Instagram, I can press and hold my finger on it and press edit. And by doing so, I can change the name of the app. So this is quite niche. I'm not sure if that's really useful at any point, but definitely quite a nice feature to have if you want to, for example, change the name of the duplicated app however of course the duplicated version can be renamed in the app cloner settings there is also a feature called free call which we can find by opening settings now over here if we go to mobile network you should be able to find free call at the bottom now this feature allows you to call uh, people nearby even if you don't have an access to the internet or you didn't have mobile signal now instead this feature uses bluetooth um, but I assume that other people should also have this feature in order to be able to uh, call them. Now, in order to use this feature, you actually have to set up the Realme account, which is actually quite easy to do. You can just use your email over here. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff, uh, which can be quite useful in very specific situations. Now, in these settings, we're going to go to home screen and lock screen, and we can find icon pull down gesture which can be quite useful if you want to or if you have to use your phone with just one hand so let's enable this feature in order to use it all you have to do is simply uh, start moving your finger from the left or right side somewhere over here towards the middle and as you can see we have all apps condensed into this panel and without lifting your finger of course we can scroll through we can go through these apps and if you lift your finger uh, for example, if I place my finger on this Gemini app, if I lift my finger, I will open this app. So this can be quite useful, like I said, if you have just one hand uh, right now that you can use. So of course, if you go to notifications, uh, you might be able to see, example, uh, quick settings buttons. However, as you can see, we can also split it like this. So you can have just notifications over here and just uh, quick settings separated. Now, in order to have this uh, option, what you need to do is go to settings, then go to notifications and quick settings, and then open quick settings. In here, we can switch between classic and split. So, of course, classic, like I said, allows you to have access to some options over here. Then we can swipe down again in order to open quick settings or control center. But if you choose to split, then you can just swipe on the right side of the phone in order to just show quick settings. So this can be also quite useful if you wish to have a quicker access to full quick settings panel. Now in these settings, we're going to go to security and privacy. And over here, what we can find is, for example, app lock and hide apps feature, uh, among other things, of course. But generally speaking, if we go to the app lock, we can um, create a privacy password that is used in other features as well so one privacy password is used for example for the app lock for hidden apps for private safe and so on and so forth and this option allows you to hide not hide to lock apps so that the access to these apps is of course uh, locked behind the passwords if you try to open them you will have to enter the password or use biometrics and like i said we can also hide apps 
and we have two options in general we can either hide apps into a hide apps folder or app per se that is accessible in the app drawer or uh, you can use a dial pad so uh, here we have the demonstration so you can open the phone app and then enter the code and that's how you can access these hidden apps or you can just have an app added oh into the home screen not the app drawer but into the home screen besides that if you go to more security and privacy then over here you should be able to find anti-theft features where we have anti-theft alarm which can alert alert us when charging is interrupted when headphones are removed or when sim card is removed besides that we can also find the power off verification which means that if someone tries to turn off your phone the screen lock password will be required so you won't be able to turn off your phone without entering the screen lock password and the same thing can be applied to location and network settings so that you can prevent turning off location by other people in case your phone is lost or stolen if we go to accessibility and convenience we can find a bunch of different options that well they all uh, can be quite useful for some people we have some ai assistance we have some gestures and so on and so forth various different options however there are a couple of them that i think are especially worth mentioning for example the ai smart loop uh, which allows you to have access to uh, this additional panel uh, where we can touch and hold any image text and video or file and bring it to the ai smart loop we can share a screenshot and bring it up um, and bring up the AI smart loop. We can extract on-screen content. We can spin the loop. And of course, we also have quick functions in apps. Besides that, we have AI planner that I personally didn't use, but we can um, tap on any screen uh, outside of the home screen. So if you have any app opened or anything, and then the phone can summarize the content of the screen and if based on that content there is information about an incoming event then you can automatically create that event and add it into the calendar we also have screen recognition where uh, we can enable it from the smart sidebar or after taking a screenshot we can interact with the screen content so you can slide the text sl well slide on the text in order to select it we can touch and hold to identify images and the drag selected content to the file doc if we have the uh, smart sidebar enabled and we also have uh, summaries generated by ai so uh, also definitely worth checking out besides these options we also have air gestures which are i believe they are here in smart sensing yeah so here we have ai not ai air gestures messing up uh, ai already uh, but uh, generally speaking with gestures that we can perform right in front of the front camera we can control our phone or at least in specific scenarios for example when trying to answer or mute incoming calls as you can see over here or you can even scroll through social media content when using uh, pay, uh, not pages apps like uh, f facebook instagram tiktok etc if we go to air scroll then you can also find the list of supported apps and unfortunately only these four apps are supported uh, but uh, still better than nothing of course so definitely worth trying out um, it's just a gimmick i think it's just an interesting uh, tool that i don't think it's really that useful but uh, definitely worth checking out maybe you will actually like it very much besides that as you can see we have double tap to scan so if you have a qr code you can double tap the back of the phone more precisely somewhere over here in this area and if you aim your phone at the qr code then you can quickly scan the qr code without having to open the camera or the qr code scanner now as a drawback there is no preview of how you are scanning the qr code so it can be at least at first quite hard to use but with a little bit of practice it's definitely worth checking out and definitely quicker than having to go to the quick settings in order to open the scanner or to go to the camera in order to scan the QR code. Over here we can also find recording summary where we can generate transcripts, summaries, key items and extract time and location to quickly create an event and navigate to a place. Over here we can enable this recording summary in order to use it. This is of course used uh, for the recorder app that we can find in the app drawer. 
And last but not least, in accessibility settings, we can also find a dedicated RAM for a game. So this is for, especially for those that of course play some games on your phones. Over here, we can enable dedicated RAM for a game so we can allocate dedicated memory uh, to games so they can launch faster by simply enabling this option. And here we also have preview of the gaming time, quick launches, and so on and so forth. And the last option, the last tip that I want to show you is the heart rate measurement. In order to find it, we need to go to Realme Lab in the settings. And then over here we have heart rate measurement. In this case, you need to simply place your finger on the sensor where we have the fingerprint sensor and we need to keep touching it for 15 seconds. And after that time, you should be able to get your results. Of course, these heart rate measurements are not really that accurate. Uh, they are just like a fun tool that we can use from time to time. Definitely not as precise as, for example, smartwatches that also have this feature. Um, but of course, uh, why not to use it from time to time? So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. Um, if there is something that I didn't mention, but you think is quite interesting on this phone, then of course you can leave it in the comments. Uh, take care.